This one is HA202304, and it is a variance request by Chancey Drugs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As we discussed at the work session and we're describing your packet, this is not a typical variance request that we would see in Hancock anywhere else. Uh, but it is simply based on some very specific language and some recently adopted state laws. This has to do with pharmacies um, selling low THC pharmaceutical related products. Um, for state licensing that's required for that kind of dispensing, um, the state imposes a 1,000 foot radial spacing requirement that the pharmacy has to be at least 1,000 feet away from any school any church or any commercial daycare center. Um, if it is not more than a thousand feet, the state has granted authority to the local government through a variance process um, to grant relief from that thousand foot requirement. Um, staff, as we talked about the work session struggle for several months to get some guidance on that. It's obviously variance review criteria that we would apply to setbacks or number of parking spaces and things in the zoning code obviously don't apply to state licensing. Aside from the fact that it's a local <coughs> government ranking a variance to a state law, which raises, in my mind, all sorts of other interesting questions. We don't have all the answers to those interesting questions yet, um, but it is becoming a discussion going on around the state. But looking at the law itself, and the copy of that is in your packet, this is OCGA section 16-12-215, reading the language a couple different ways. We think we have determined the intent behind it, and it is simply this. The state wants the sale of these products to be available to anyone in Georgia who has got the proper prescription to obtain it, and for them to be able to find it at a local pharmacy without having to leave their community or travel long distances. So the concern I think the state had is with a thousand foot requirement, particularly in a small community like Nehara, that it might preclude any pharmacies within that town to be able to be eligible even to get the state license. And the state did not want to put <coughs> that kind of super restriction on the small town unless the small town wanted to go along with that. So they allowed the local governments to make that decision if they wanted to grant the variance or not. So keep in mind, it's simply the granting of the variance to make an applicant eligible to apply for the state license. The granting of the variance does not grant approval of the license. There's still the state review process for that. And that has a bunch of other hurdles and rules attached. So in this case, we focus on Heihara. There's only one existing pharmacy in town, which is the applicant's. And they are within a thousand feet of four of these items. Heihara Middle School, three different churches, and a daycare center. So they're kind of in the crosshairs of all of it. Um, staff looked at all of those facilities within the city. This is something we talked about at the work session. If we were to draw a thousand foot radius circles around each of those, you've eliminated most of the city. The only part that remains is the exit 29 area, which means to follow the state rules, um, a new pharmacy would have to open in Hayhara around exit 29 which seems kind of ridiculous, uh, particularly considering the full range of products that pharmacies are already licensed to do or have specialty licenses to do. So in this case, I think the guidelines put in by the state and their intent behind the local government granting variance fits well with Hayhara with this one and only pharmacy to be made eligible. So Hayhara residents do not have to travel a distance to get to such a pharmacy. So with all of that, for the variance purposes pursuant to the state law only, staff is recommending approval. Thank you, Matt. Any questions for staff? There being none, we'll move on to the public aspect of this <coughs> case. Is there anyone that would like to speak in favor? Hello, I'm Hugh Chancy, the uh, owner of Chancy Drugs and AR. We've been serving the community since 1960. Sorry to interrupt you. Can you state your address? Uh, I apologize. 6274 Highway 122 East. <clears throat> we have been serving the AR community since 1966, and we're a 
patient patient centric pharmacy. We like to bring solutions to the patient's needs. And unfortunately, for the last uh, five or six years, we have not been able to serve the patients that have had cards because it has not been approved in the state to actually dispense uh, low THC products. Uh, the governor has passed that law this year, and uh, also the state board of pharmacy has approved regulations, which will allow us. Um, we're in line to be um, uh, checked out by them. They have spe specific and stringent <coughs> guidelines in order to uh, monitor the inventory of this and the dispensing of it. Um, it will have to be approved by a physician in order for a patient to get a card. Uh, they get the card, then the state approves that application from the doctor, uh, which will allow them to come in and purchase low THC products. Uh, it has been legal in the state of Georgia for the last few years to have those uh, items on hand, but no one in the state could dispense them. So they were having to get them outside of the state, which was not legal. And um, we're really glad that the governor has approved this in the law and that the state board has written the regulations that will allow us to do this. Um, we have seen tremendous uh, improvements uh, in children with autism, children with seizures, uh, patients with chronic pain, uh, patients that are suffering with uh, cancer, chemotherapy, uh, treatments and, and things of the like. There's 17 different areas that can be treated with this and uh, all of the, the uh, research that has been shown is to really make a huge improvement in patients' lives. Um, we really feel strong that it should be coming from a pharmacy. The governor has approved dispensaries that are not in pharmacies, um, but we feel like that many of these patients are on complicated uh, uh, therapies and they need to have uh, a medical expert to be able to look at the drugs they're taking, make sure there's no drug-drug interactions, and make sure that they understand the dosing. My uncle uh, went through eight bouts of cancer. Um, my aunt told me that he had some uh, medicinal cannabis, and she wouldn't tell me where she got it, but um, she had no idea what to do with it. Uh, she didn't know how to dose it. She didn't know how to interact with all of his medications. And she called me scared to death. At the time, I didn't know how to dose it either. But um, we've been educated and trained on this, and we feel like that we can serve our community for the patients that need uh, the low THC uh, products. And I'll be glad to answer any questions from you guys. You know, I do have a question. I noticed in the reg that was afforded to us um, that y'all are not going to market or advertise that you have this that the way the patients who have the card will know that you have it is through their doctor. Is that correct? So you can't just like put a big sign on your door that says, we now carry. According to the reg, it says, no licensee shall advertise or market low THC oil to registered patients for the public. However, that a licensee shall be authorized to provide information regarding its low THC directly to physicians. So you can market to physicians you just we can can't. educate. And educate. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. That was the key word I was looking for. I don't think you have a case where the patients who have this card are very eager to find all the available locations. Right. Yeah. It. I have a friend whose 37 year old daughter has a card. I don't know where he goes to get, to get it, but he lives in Hanara. So I, I truly hope that you guys get it because it would make his life so much easier. Well, up until recently, there's been the closest place to get it would be um, Macon or Savannah, Atlanta. Those were the three places that had a dispensary. But I'm a firm believer that the whole medication <coughs> profile needs to be looked at um, when you're using it to treat a particular condition. And, um, you know, this is not something that people off the street can come in and get. They have to have that part and it has to be approved from a physician, and they have to verify that they have one of those 17 conditions that can benefit from this therapy. I think they ought to be blessed to have it. Any further questions? <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Mr. Chancy. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of this? <coughs>
Uh, my name's Gretchen Porterman. I live at 65-65 Porterman Road in Hay Harbor. Um, what I want to say is that when this law was made, it was made exactly for communities like Hay Harbor, where we have this one drugstore. I can't tell you what he's saying about full patient care. I get all of my drugs, everything that I take from chances in Hay Harbor. I get my flu shot, my COVID shot, my pneumonia, I get everything there, and they completely understand my health in my little community. So that's the kind of place that we want to have, and it's the only drugstore in our community, so it needs this kind of area. <clears throat> right, is there anyone that would like to speak against this variance request? There being none, we'll open it up for discussion. Well, I'm about as transparent as they come. I think this is, I think this is great for our little town. A new hair salon and a place where my friend can get what his daughter needs to stop for 30 plus seizures.